Hi everyone, this is Eric Bond, the founder of Beat the GMAT, and welcome to the Write Like an Expert series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business uh, 2012 and 2013 application essay questions. So if you're new to the Write Like an Expert series, this is actually an annual set of webinars that we put on for the Beat the GMAT community, where we invite top MBA admissions experts to join us live to break down the essay questions uh, for each of the top MBA programs. And co-hosting today are our good friends at MBA Mission, as well as Jeremy Scheinwald, who is the founder of MBA Mission. So a little background on uh, the MBA Mission firm. If you haven't heard of this firm, uh, this is actually an elite MBA Missions consulting company. Uh, a very unique uh, value prop. All their senior consultants have uh, elite MBA experiences themselves. They graduate from the top schools, as well as very strong communication skills. And this is something that they really emphasize their communication skills for the consultants to help you to craft your story effectively. Uh, MBA Mission is exclusively recommended by Manhattan GMAT as well as Kaplan, which should provide some validation about their quality. Jeremy Scheinwald is a longtime friend of the Beat the GMAT community and the founder of MBA Mission. Uh, before forming MBA Mission, he was actually a speechwriter for the ambassador of Israel to the United States. And he's, uh, from that experience, uh, learned to translate his great skills as a writer into MBA Mission, his, his firm, where he and his team focus on communication and effective stories for their clients. Jeremy is frequently quoted in the press. I've seen his articles in Business Week, The Wall Street Journal, US News and World Report, and, and other journals. And uh, he always puts on a good show, too. So he's, he's done many webinars for the BTG Mac community in the past, and they've been among our most popular. So I'm very excited about today's uh, uh, analysis of the Booth School of Business essay questions with Jeremy. So before I hand it off to Jeremy, though, uh, a little bit about our structure for today. So in a moment, Jeremy's going to go through his presentation of uh, the Booth School of Business application essay analysis uh, in his view. And that should take probably between 30 and 40 minutes. After the session, uh, some folks from uh, MBA Mission, um, some of his team members will be around to answer your questions in a live Q&A. So if you have questions that you'd like to ask about the Booth School of Business, uh, you can post those questions as new comments right here on the Booth MBA Watch comment wall. It'll be a moderated chat, so we'll see the questions coming in. And then when the Q&A starts, we're going to uh, publish those questions one by one and have the MBA mission team answer as many as possible for the remaining hour. And uh, just a note too, there won't be any audio or visual for uh, the, for the, or video I, sh I should say, for the, the Q&A that follows the presentation. So I hope that's clear. And uh, at this point, I'm gonna hand it off to Jeremy to take us through his analysis of the 2012-2013 Booth School of Business MBA application essay questions. So Jeremy, it's all yours. Thanks so much for the kind introduction, Eric, and, and thanks for having me back uh, at the Write Like an Expert series. Uh, we did an event last week with, uh, with Wharton. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We love doing these events. Um, they might, uh, that might be as a result of my own heritage as a, as a uh, former speechwriter for an ambassador. I love, the, I love the presentations on writing. Um, so, uh, so that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about essays and, uh, and Chicago Booth essays in particular and how to write effective ones. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So um, you need to know who you're writing for before you can start writing. And uh, then we'll talk. So we want to talk about, talk about the Chicago Booth Admissions Office. Um, and then we'll talk about how to write those Chicago Booth essays. And then we'll also talk a little bit about uh, MBA admission at the very end. So um, let's think about the admissions officer for a second. Let's think about the Chicago Booth admissions office in particular. Um, they have 4,200 applications for about 500 spots, about 4,200 applications, give or take. And, um, and the admissions office has to cater to the needs of five different constituents. They need to cater to professors. They need to make sure that you have the academic potential to succeed in class and that you fit with the teaching style at the school. Um, you know, it's obviously important and that's measured in your, your GPA and your GMAT primarily, but also a little bit in terms of your personality if you fit with a particular teaching method. Um, 
and you know they don't want to upset the professors. <laughs> they don't want to. They don't want to have a situation where the professors feel that you, they've that the admissions office has let in a bunch of people who can't manage the uh, the curriculum and the course load. Um, similarly with students, but students worry not just about academic potential. I mean, they don't want to have someone uh, in the classroom who's dragging things down. Uh, they don't want to have someone in their learning team who's who's slowing them down. Uh, but they also students also want to know that you have professional potential that they're their immediate network is going to be valuable, and also that you have have uh, have immediate potential socially. That you're uh, going to participate and make the environment fun, um, and that you're not going to be someone who uh, you know is a is a lone wolf and uh, and only participating in class and, and disappearing thereafter. Students want a strong community and they want that network. So um, so the admissions office has to think about not just your academic potential, but professional. A potential and the fact that you, you know, and, and also you know, your ability to fit in socially and create that warm community that, that students want. Alumni, I mean, alumni probably less focused on academic potential, but um, but certainly, you know, the admissions office needs to think about that from a professional and leadership potential perspective. Alumni come back to the school; they manage recruiting by and large, um, and so uh, the school, you know, the admissions office needs to think about your ability to be employable and that's similar with, with with recruiters as well I mean alumni are are defenders also of the of the you know the the, the brand of the school um, and uh, recruiters are, are maybe singularly focused on the professional leadership potential after a while they probably are less concerned about where you went to school they just, they just want to know um, you know initially they're getting high quality people who are going to come in and, and have a great deal of potential finally the dean that worry, who worries about all the above he worries about your academic potential um, social fit. He wants you to really be an overall brand steward, and so the admissions office is doing their best to manage these scarce resources. They've got a, they've got a, you know, 500 spots, and each one of them is an important decision. It's a bet on the future of the school and on their relationship with each and every one of these constituents. Um, and it, it might not seem like that, um, like a decision of that magnitude, but you know, there are thousands of others who could otherwise take that spot. Um, so, what does this particular admissions office think at Booth? Well, this is from an, uh, from an interview that we did that you can find on our um, on our blog on the right hand side. We've done a variety of, of interviews with admissions officers, um, and um, you know we like to bust up some myths every once in a while. And I think that people perceive that Chicago is a finance school or a quant school, and um, and this was uh, Kurt Alm, the director of admissions, response. We don't employ any quotas in our review process. We simply look to enroll a diverse, smart group of students who fit well with the values and culture of Booth. Um, I'll skip part, but we want to maintain that same commitment to welcoming, welcoming a diverse mix that has propelled us for generations. So the school is not looking for one kind of person. They're not looking to have a class of only finance candidates. Um, Chicago Booth has an excellent marketing program. It's got an awesome entrepreneurial program. So you shouldn't pander to what you think the school is about, but rather try to create your own fit using the resources that the school has if they ask you about um, about why you'd be a good fit with the school. Um, also, you know, I think people feel like um, like the schools are, um, you know, they're reviewing your file with a desire to, uh, you know, find the flaw and kick you out. Uh, and that's really not the case either. Uh, here's, again, Kurt Alm at Booth. Our process is iterative. iterative with many committee members reviewing an applicant's file before a final decision is made. We calibrate our review process to make sure we're looking for similar elements of fit. We all investigate the application a little differently. I tend to follow the order of the application, personal information, professional information. The idea here is obviously that he's reading your whole file and trying to get to know you. You're not just the sum of uh, you know, a GPA and GMAT score. They really are trying to get to the heart of you as a qualitative applicant. So again, think of what you want to say to the admissions committee, um, you know, beyond uh, just you know your your stats, which are only a piece of the puzzle. Um, and again, you know, we we actually notice that um, that a lot of candidates who um, struggle in this process, we do a variety of, of free ding reviews at the end of the year for people who didn't use us as a firm. Um, and uh, we find that people make the same mistakes over and over again. They don't really think about, you know, kind of how um, how they fit with the school. They don't articulate their goals well in relation to the school's resources. They don't really understand what the school is about. And, um, and so here's Kurt Alm again saying, take time to thoroughly think through your objectives. 
Why do you want an MBA? What skills or experiences do you hope to gain? How do you prefer to learn? How do all these things put you in a better position to accomplish your short and long-term goals? Um, he's basically saying, really think about this. I, I think all these, all these slides basically say, just think. Really know what you want to say before you start writing these essays. Don't sit down and think that you can game this process. So let's talk about, let's take a glass of water there, a sip of water. <coughs> um, let's talk about creating standout Chicago booth essays. So first and foremost, what are uh, the, the essay questions this year? Well, the first one is, what are your short and long-term goals? How will an MBA from Chicago booth help you reach them? Fairly straightforward personal statement. Um, and again, you know, that, that relates back to what Kurt is trying to say. Really think through why you want that MBA, what skills you hope to gain, etc. Um, then you have a, an interesting and, and quirky uh, series of two essays. Uh, what has been your biggest challenge and what have you learned from it? Tell us about something that's fundamentally transformed the way you think. Quirky because they're 200 words. That's a pretty small box uh, to fit, your, fit a story into, but we'll talk about that. Um, and then the, again, a little bit quirky um, but fun uh, presentation essay. This is an abbreviated version of the question because it's quite long. In a four slide presentation or an essay of no more than 600 words, broaden our perspective about who you are. Um, so um, the, the presentation, uh, you know, uh, for those of you who are newcomers, is, is sort of a Chicago specific um, uh, component of an application. Uh, there are some other schools, NYU most notably, that has a creative essay, but, uh, but Chicago is the first one that came up with this PowerPoint presentation. So let's take a look. How are you going to attack this? Well, I've actually taken taken the uh, after all these years, I'm going to I'm going to base a a, um, a an example on myself. This is this is me as a uh, as a past candidate to to business school um, when I was um, the age I believe I was 23 when I applied to business school, um, and these were my identities. And we always say to candidates, you know, think about your identities before you even write. Just think broadly about your identities. So my identities, I worked in public affairs. I was an ice hockey coach for many years. I had uh, started a comedy troupe. I had done a service trip abroad, and I was in student government. Now I was only, uh, I think, two years out. Of, I was two years out when I applied, so I could still access some of my, some of my student stories. Um, so these were my identities. Now what you're going to want to do is list out your identities, because you can't just start writing. So really think about who you are. List out your identities, and, and then break them down. So as a public affairs officer, I probably managed three or four different campaigns. So I developed one new PR campaign, and I'm just going to break that down. I've got three or four campaigns. Let's examine one. Where did my idea come from for that new PR campaign? How did I get the budget for it? I was working in an embassy, so you know resources were scarce. How did I manage two interns on the project? How did I manage a private-public employee uh, partnership on the project as we engaged design professionals and, and outside consultants on the project? How did you manage, how did I manage uh, follow-on work? I uh, usually don't make things this personal, but hey, why not for today? Um, so how did I manage uh, follow-on work that came as a result of the success of the project? How did I cope with internal rivalry, rivalry and manage a promotion that came as a result of, of, this, uh, of this public affairs um, campaign? So this is just one, just one component of one identity and um, and I have you know, I, I have a whole bunch of questions to ask myself, and you know not all of them will will result in stories, but some of them will. Um, so examine all of the stakeholders and all of your experiences, and do that with every public affairs pro um, um, project that you're on. Um, do that with all of the uh, examine all of the relationships you had with the hockey coach, the players, the parents, um, the community center that you coached at, etc. So here are the outputs that came, and this is simplified. I mean, we don't have room to, to, to offer all of the outputs here, but there are a lot of outputs. Here are the outputs that came as a result of this kind of analysis. So output, public affairs. Um, created text and approached ambassador with, with prototype, leading to green light and budget. Fairly straightforward. Managed a lazy intern and a motivated intern, giving them incentive to complete their work on time was a peacemaker between private and public sectors, sector workers, launching PR concept at different pace, paces. 
Hard to promotion uh, campaign to launch campaign launch in other languages. Lost some friends on the team. Not everything has to be positive. You can have a negative outcome. Sometimes schools uh, will ask you questions about failures or setbacks. So I'm not saying each one of these is the best essay idea. I'm saying that right now we're trying to generate as many essay ideas as possible in order to um, to give you slash me, this hypothetical me, a uh, a a variety of options um, to as I try and write essays. So let's go to the next one here. Um, this is the output for being a hockey coach. Team lost 15 of 18 games. I kept morale up using team building skills. Um, was a big brother to, to kid on the team whose parents were going through divorce. I actually was went to parent teacher interview night, which was uh, which was interesting and fun. Um, so you know this is this is. These are some of the other outcomes here, uh, outputs here. Um, comedy, when I did my comedy troupe, founded the troupe, and I actually had to fire my roommate who wasn't uh, fitting in culturally with our team and was people didn't feel that, that kind of freewheeling style that you need for, for a comedy troupe because they felt judged. Um, so here, are, I'm not going to go through every output, but you go back to these identities and the outputs correspond. So, um, uh, so here's the hockey coach and the comedy. Here's the service trip. I uh, didn't speak the language. Somehow established friendships. Um, student government. The government was in disarray. I cleaned up the books and helped them pass an audit. Uh, so these are a variety of, of, of outputs. And the idea is, in, in a vacuum, create as many stories as possible, and then give yourself as many options as you can to answer questions. So um, here's an option for Chicago's biggest challenge question. Well, was it a challenge for me to be a peacemaker between private and public sector workers, launching a, a PR concept at, at different paces for each. Of course it was. Um, what about keeping morale up using team building skills um, when the team lost 15 of its first 18 games? Or being a big brother to a kid on the team whose parents were going through a divorce? Or firing a roommate? All these things were challenges. So now I've got a lot of different options. What about transforming thought? Not as many options. Um, uh, so, um, you know, these were transformational experiences. Um, creating text and approaching the ambassador and getting that green light was a transformational experience. Not speaking the language, um, somehow establishing friendships, transformational experience. Um, so now I've got a variety of options for myself. What's amazing here is the number of options that are available for the slide presentation. Um, I, you know, the slide presentation is so broad and open-ended that, um, you know, you can you should try to embrace as many stories as possible without being a you know jack of all trades master of none um, but you should try to to present as much of yourself um, professionally potentially um, from the community uh, entrepreneurially athletically uh, intellectually personally all these, these things um, you know, try to present as much of yourself as possible uh, so that the school gets a, a very broad window into who you are. You know, you don't want to just be Jeremy the Traveler. That's too narrow. Um, but if you can be, uh, you know, as much, if you can offer as many identities as possible, the school will really get to know you. Um, so here is, here are some of the options of the slide presentation. And again, you don't want to, you don't repeat yourself. So um, if you use uh, Team Loss 15 of 18 games, well, here it is. You wouldn't use it on, on your slide presentation again. Um, so you want, only want to use each of your stories once uh, and keep the reader learning about you. You want the reader to, in your first essay, to to learn something new. In your second essay, learn something new. In your third essay, and then in your presentation, learn a lot of new things about you. You don't want to waste their time or frustrate them by telling them the same things over and over again. So um, here's, the, here's the slide presentation, but it actually keeps going. There, there, the slide presentation is so open-ended that virtually every option, um, every output that you had can fit, can hypothetically fit in the slide presentation. Um, so you have a lot of different data that you can offer. So let's go back to the beginning here. What are your short and long-term goals and how will an MBA from Chicago booth help you reach them in 500 words? So this is a classic personal statement where you have to give some context for your goals, um, discuss your objectives, carefully and uh, and then relate them to Chicago Booth. So uh, we have a free personal statement guide on our uh, on the front page of our website, mbaadmission.com. You can download um, a guide and several examples in that guide and, uh, and get a little bit more depth on this. But um, you can't just kind of launch into your goal and say, when I graduate from Chicago, 
I want to be a consultant. Um, it doesn't, we don't have the context for why you'd be good at it or why you're telling us that. So you need to give a little bit, you know, 50, 75, maybe 100 words the most on, uh, on, on why you actually um, are connected to that, to that goal um, intellectually or experientially. Um, and then you need to develop your, your goals, those objectives. You can't just, um, well, as we'll see in the next slide, you can't just kind of say, I want to be a consultant. And, uh, and then you need to relate them back directly to Chicago Booth. It's not, you're not telling Chicago Booth that Chicago Booth is a great school. They know that. You're going to explain how you're going to use their resources effectively. So here's an example of, here's a bad example. I want to be a consultant. And this is what people do all the time, and this is maybe an oversimplification, but people will say, when I graduate, I want to be a consultant. It'll be challenging analytically. I'll solve problems. Um, it'll be fascinating. But we don't have a sense of any ownership of why you want to be that consultant. Um, instead, good here, um, ownership of those goals. Um, after two years in government, I fundamentally understand the bureaucracy and how to navigate it. Upon graduation, I would aspire to join Guzman Co. in its defense and aerospace practice, helping clients understand market entry strategies. So this is an individual who knows what kind of consulting he wants to do and has a vision for it. This is one who um, just is, is sort of ill-informed or maybe properly informed but just not explaining it terribly well. And the admissions committee is going to look and say, you know, we've got a lot of people who want to be consultants, but um, I'm not convinced that this guy really owns those goals. Similarly, um, you know, that connection to Chicago Booth. Chicago Booth is an excellent MBA program. The entrepreneurship program would be ideal for me as I launch my new venture. Only a Chicago Booth MBA will enable me to achieve my goals. Um, this person means it. You know, he, he's, he's, not, um, you know, he's not being totally disingenuous. Uh, sorry, I'm just adjusting my mic here. I hope uh, you guys didn't get too much, too much feedback there. Um, so, uh, you know, but this is, <coughs> pardon me, a bit of a cool. Um, this is a, an entirely generic answer. I could put, you know, Columbia is an excellent MBA program. The entrepreneurship program would be ideal for me as I launch my new venture. Only a Columbia MBA will enable me to achieve my goals. So, you know, do this generic test where if you put your, um, your school, another school name in there and it still works, you likely have a problem. It's not specific enough. How about um, this example here? Um, so embarking on an entrepreneurial path immediately has its risks. Sorry, embarking on an entrepreneurial path immediately has its risks, but through the resources available at Booth, I'll have the great, greatest chance uh, at success. Building the new venture and building internet startups, risk, reward, and failure will provide crucial context as I enter the new, enter the new venture challenge with my peers. As I test myself on the challenge, I'll constantly keep an eye on the Arch Venture Incubator. This is an individual who's done his homework. He knows why he wants to go to Chicago Booth. Um, He's not just offering the generic. If you put Wharton in here, um, the classes wouldn't make sense. The new venture challenge probably wouldn't make sense, and, and uh, the arch venture incubator definitely wouldn't make sense. Um, and so, you know, really try to get specific about not what you like about Chicago, but what need Chicago will serve for you. I'm in position A in my career. I'm going to these goals in position C, and Chicago is B. It's the bridge. It's going to it's going to educate me in order to get me there, and I understand how I'm going to use those resources. Let's look at the short essays, uh, short answer essays. What's been your biggest challenge, and what have you learned from it? Tell us about something that has fundamentally transformed the way you think. Um, this is not a, um, you know, th this is not, even though it's 200 words, this is still an essay, and you can still develop a, a proper narrative here. Um, you know, you don't want to start this by saying, my biggest challenge was traveling to Ukraine and um, communicating and successfully communicating with a group of individuals who did not speak English. That's a mistake a lot of people make all the time. And when you, when you, um, you, you offer that kind of blunt tell at the beginning, there's no reason for the reader to, to, to continue on. They know the whole story from the beginning. You need to engage the reader in the story. Right? I just told you the beginning and end in one sentence. Um, you know, you need to open the story so that the, the reader has a, re has a reason to continue on. Um, so you need to have a proper intro. There needs to be a conflict, and then there needs to be a resolution as well. Tell us about something that has fundamentally transformed the way you think. We don't want to hear about the transformation in the first sentence. We need you to, to lead us and explain us how you got to that transformation. So um, who wrote these famous opening lines? We're talking about intros here. It's the best of times, worst of times. A well-read group here. Dickens uh, from A Tale of Two Cities. Call me Ishmael. 
Melville's Moby Dick. And it was a dark and stormy night. And this is actually a bit of a red herring. Um, it was a dark and stormy night. Uh, Edward, Edward Bulwer-Lytton is his name. And the only reason why I know that is because I have to admit I've done this slide before. And, uh, and my point here is that this is actually considered to be kind of a corny, hokey line, but it's one that is, has, has stuck with us for many years. And the point is that pay attention to that opening line. It, it captures our imagination. I'm not saying it needs to be poetic, like, uh, you know, it was the best of times, the worst of times, or call me Ishmael, but you know, really think about what you're saying so that someone will, um, will, will want to read on. Um, so here's, uh, here's an example of a variety of different openings. Um, straightforward opening I just touched upon. After five months of hard work, my startup gelato concept shut down and I lost my life savings. And in this example, um, we've learned all there is to learn. There's no reason for us to carry on. So number two, the launch. Just get to the point quickly. In 200 words, you can't belabor the point. You know, you can't say, um, you know, the gelato market was expanding uh, in the Chicago area by 10%, but the number of retailers was also was only expanding by 5%. I saw an opportunity and um, decided that you, know, you just need to, to get right into the heart of it and just tell us what you're doing. When I left McKinsey to start Fresh Tastic Gelato, my mentor questioned my sanity. My mother literally cried before I even handed him my security deck. I was elbow deep. Okay, we, we're in the middle of the action here. Anecdotal narrows in on some action. Elbow deep even gelato, I wash my hands and lunch on the phone. Um, you know, uh, I, um, uh, you know, it was customer ordering dot, dot, dot. We're, we're in the middle of a, 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 just a narrow anecdote about your experience, and then you're going to introduce us thereafter. Tougher to pull off with a 200-word essay, of course. Um, inverted, this is just bringing the end to the beginning, so there's some mystery. The key here is maintaining the mystery, which we killed in the straightforward, um, uh, number one here, the straightforward example. One quart tubs lined the refrigerated shelves. Uh, as the sun blazed, customers lined up for two city blocks. Still, the bankers were lining up as well. And now we go to the beginning. Um, it had been three months since I started my uh, gelato concept, dot, dot, dot. Um, and so, you know, think carefully about that opener so that you grab that person's attention. Um, and then you have to hold their attention, and you hold their attention through conflict. Um, now, that doesn't mean, you know, violent conflict. Uh, you're not smashing chairs on people's heads. Um, but there needs to be the literary sense of conflict, an oppositional force that shapes your experience. Um, and if you think about the popularity of reality TV shows, this is a whole genre, a multi-billion dollar genre based on manufactured conflict. Um, there isn't a, uh, there's, there's no you know, actual conflict in, in most of these shows. They're foisting conflict upon you, you know, by throwing someone off the island or, or kicking someone off the cooking show or whatever it is. And, you know, if you think about your standard, um, you know, your Jersey Shore or something like that, uh, what, who would watch that show if there was no, you know, boozing or, I don't know, I've never, never seen the show, but fighting, I, I, you know, all that type of stuff. If the show was shot during the day and it was a bunch of well-mannered New Jerseyites who, uh, who talked about current events and got along relatively well, you wouldn't watch the show. So there needs to be a conflict in your essay. We can't just have the the essay, um, you know, being an, an easy cruise towards uh, victory, and <clears throat> and that's really something to keep in mind. You know, making sure that that you have, um, you, you know, a, a, there's some development of your character in each story. Um, so, in terms of a narrative, you know, you want to be writing from a first-person perspective. This is about you. It's not an again. It's not about the gelato market. You're not saying, oh, gelato. The gelato market grew by five percent. You're writing about you. These are this is, these are personal essays about you. Um, earnestness is important. You don't need to brag. You don't need to say you're the best. Um, you need to show the reader who you are through your actions. And and uh, people often say, well, I'm not a great writer. Um, this isn't about excellent writing. This is just about finding a good story and letting it tell itself. So let's take a look at this example here from a personal statement. Um, during my first three years at Goldman Sachs, I worked harder than other analysts. I quickly proved my analytical skills and dedication, so I was asked a junior mentor, to mentor junior analysts. I was then placed in some of the biggest projects in the company's history. So this is first person, but it's not terribly earnest. Um, you know, I worked harder than other analysts. Really, how? Prove it. We don't know that. Um, there's no evidence. You're not showing us how you worked harder, and, and, and if you tried to, it, it might not work. Um, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, first person, yes, but does it pass our kind of our, our ownership test of that first sentence. During my first three years at Goldman Sachs, I, I worked harder than other analysts. It's not terribly memorable. No one's, gonna, no one's getting a picture of you that they can remember the next day. 
Um, I quickly proved my analytical skills, really, how? So I was asked to mentor junior analysts. Um, you know, I found myself gaining the respect and attention of analysts, associates, and even managing directors. There's a lot of bragging here and not a lot of evidence. Um, as we switch to a narrative style here, on my first day at Goldman Sachs, my managing director, Steve Smith, informed me, I don't have an open door policy, I have a no door policy. Well, you know, this is an example of someone someone owns this opening. You know, there really aren't, not everyone can write this. Um, so I'd frequently walk into his office, often at 3 or 4 a.m. Okay, this person's working hard, 3 or 4 a.m., he's there, with a question only to be encouraged to ask even more. After six months, I barely visited Steve, but soon found junior analysts at my door telling me, Steve said you were the right person to ask. So, we don't need to hear that you were gaining the respect or that Steve thought you were awesome. We know that because Steve's sending people your way. So this is a more subtle way of expressing the exact same information. Um, this is the story of hard work and gaining respect, but this is a little bit, uh, we're kind of repelled by all the bragging here. And here we are, um, we embrace it because the individual is humble. Um, so, you know, really keep that in mind. And this is actually an easier way to write because you're just following the sequence here. Okay, well, I, I, on my first day, my managing director told me I had a note or he has a note or policy. So I'd ask questions. And then after I asked questions, well, what happened next? Well, um, other analysts found me and, uh, and they started asking me questions. Okay, what happened next? Well, ultimately I was placed on, on big deals. You know, so it, it's, it's a very natural flow um, that this doesn't have. You know, during my first three years at Goldman Sachs, I worked harder than other analysts. Okay, then what happened? It doesn't, there's no logical connection. So this is actually an easier way to write, not a harder way to write. So, um, yeah, what has been your, um, sorry, what, what has been your biggest challenge and what have you learned from it? Um, just going back to the question, um, your biggest challenge, this is not any challenge, this is your biggest challenge. So it's needs, it needs to be significant. You know, you need to really hear how it tested you. Um, and what have you learned from it? You need to reflect on it. And all of that in 200 words with a narrative form is going to be a challenge, but it's certainly achievable. Tell us about something that has fundamentally transformed the way you think. You know, fundamentally transformed. You, you, you came into this thinking one way, and now you think a different way. There's got to be you know, a true transformation here. This is not a something that kind of, you know, nicely altered the way you think. Um, this is something that um, that really, you know, again, challenged you, changed the way you think, and there's going to be some evidence of the before and the after. Um, and, and, and that's really, you know, what they're, they're really looking for you to, 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 to reveal that impact and that change, I suppose, in both of these, because you're, you're talking about learning in number one, you're reflecting, and then you're, you've got to show that change in number two. Oops. I think I pressed the cursor the wrong way. Let's see if I can move the slide. Okay, there we go. Presentation. Um, Chicago experience will take you deeper into issues, force you to challenge assumptions, and broaden your perspective. In a four-slide presentation or an essay of no more than 600 words, broaden our perspective about who you are, understanding what we currently know about you from the application. What else would you like us to know? So, you know, again, understanding what we currently know about you, what else? So don't go back and repeat things. Now, you can write an essay. You don't need to, to, to create a presentation. Um, you can write an essay. If you've got something interesting to say, say it. Don't just copy and paste your essay from another school and hope that it works out for you. Um, this is not a design contest. Now, you can use an interesting design, but this is not a design contest, so you don't need to hire anyone. Um, they're not going to be judging your artistic merits, but they want to know that you have some creativity and some ability to think um, in, you know, in, in an interesting manner. They reveal yourself in an interesting manner. Um, can't just put together a deck. Like if you're a consultant or a banker, you just put together four slides with three or four bullet points on each. If your slide presentation looks like this slide, um, you have a problem. So you can't just put together a deck. Um, you know, you got to keep the reader learning. Um, you got to give them structure. You can't give them chaos where it's just a ton of text and a ton of different uh, a ton of different ideas, even though I'm encouraging you to embrace all of the ideas that are left over, you know, think carefully about um, you know, how you're going to show uh, as much of yourself as possible, but you can't show everything, of course. Um, so consider the vehicle you're going to use. It doesn't need to be zany. You don't need to think of something wild or wacky. Um, it needs to open itself to significant information. So if you were to offer four pages for your passport, um, that wouldn't be, in my opinion, the best way to reveal all of you as a human being. That would reveal your travels and some adventures, and and, uh, and you know it would be somewhat limiting. If you were to prepare a 
um, a Lonely Planet guide uh, to your apartment, um, and uh, and you were to creatively you know, take someone through a tour, it would show a sense of humor and be interesting. I wouldn't use this example if I were you, because I just put it out there for the public. But um, you know, it would give you the opportunity to um, take someone on a tour of, in a weird way, a tour of your entire life, and stop at the at the significant aspects. And you know, you can say as you take uh, you know four steps forward, you'll um, you'll run to my dog Rex, and uh, you know this guy dot dot dot. You can describe it in an interesting way, and and give a window into the into into your routine in the morning. How you know Rex won't be there from seven to nine, and all these types of things, and we're going to learn about you, you know, as a traveler at some point as we, as we go through your apartment, but we're also going to learn about all sorts of other different aspects of you um, as we find these different artifacts in your apartment and learn about you through them. Um, just an example, uh, you know, but the idea is that it's, it's multidimensional. It opens itself up to, uh, to a description of, uh, of your life. Um, so that's it. That's actually that's uh, that's really what I have to say about the Chicago booth application essays. Um, let's talk a tiny bit about MBA Mission. We are the world's leading admissions consulting firm. Um, we are, um, you know, by virtue of the fact of our wonderful uh, the fact we have a, a wonderful relationship with both Kaplan and Manhattan GMAT. Both of those firms have. Uh, have, uh, have selected us and only us uh, to refer to. Um, you know, we've really become the leading firm in the world. We use that scale to invest in our staff. Um, we have a full-time staff, and we have a training program, and we have a summer uh, a summer uh, conference where we uh, last year we had uh, had ex admissions officers from Harvard, for example, come uh, to speak to us. And we actually are a real firm that is serious about this business. We commit to training. Um, a remarkable full-time staff, um, and uh, I think that, uh, that that really is something that separates us out from others. Uh, in addition, we are elite communicators. Um, everyone on our staff is a published author, and I think that um, you're going to be writing. This is, this, that's why you're here today. You're here to talk about writing. So um, you know, we're here to help you to um, communicate your story to the admissions committee. We certainly have admissions experience. You know, Katie Lewis on our team was uh, you know, she was on the Stanford Admissions Board, and um, you know Rachel Beck was uh, and did alumni interviewing at Columbia, and Angela Guido did, was on the Admissions Board in Chicago. But that's not you know it goes on and on, but that's not really um, what we think is important. We need to be able to help you tell your story, and just because you're on admissions board, on admissions board, it doesn't mean that you can help someone tell their story. Uh, we have the staff that can do that for you because they're all. Uh, published authors and writers. So here are a few, um, here's our complete start to finish process. We typically work with candidates from the very beginning to the very end of the process. Um, I'm not going to go through this in too much detail. You can feel free to do a free consultation with us and, uh, and you can learn a little bit more or you can go to our website under our services tab. Um, but most candidates work with us on a complete start to finish basis. Uh, we do have some candidates who work with us on an hourly basis where they just purchase two hours as opposed to working on an infinite basis on, uh, on our complete start to finish package. We don't cut you off. There are no limitations. Um, you can work on the 19th draft of your 19th draft of your essay. Uh, it shouldn't take that long, but the point is that, uh, that you know, we will never cut you off. Uh, hourly services, the limit is your time. We also have an excellent boot camp um, that is written by, that was prepared by, uh, well, I, I helped produce it, but also by Angela Guido, who is a Chicago Booth alum, and, uh, and she has prepared an amazing program, uh, and um, it's 10 hours, and it's a little more than the price of two hours of our services, and, uh, and it does come with some one-on-one -on -one time with her. So, um, you know, there'll be some running throughout September, and I think again in October, I think it's probably uh, the best deal running in uh, the world of admissions out there, um, but it is a blunt instrument. It'll get you from zero to 60 as opposed to um, all the way through if you want that kind of direct one-on-one -on -one guidance. Of course, our complete start to finish package is there. Um, here are a few members of our team. I, I mentioned um, Katie Lewis a second ago. Um, distinction from Harvard Business School and Harvard Law School was that McKinsey was a former Stanford admissions officer. Um, you know, Monica Carpenter Okra, Harvard Business School, um, wrote 65 successful Harvard Business School application essays with some peers at Harvard. Akiva Smith Francis, three degrees from Harvard. Um, you know, wrote for wrote an article for Forbes recently. Um, continues to write a book, uh, which is coming out eventually, which I, I think would be amazing on career changers. Uh, Lynn Maloney, again, another Harvard grad, was a former managing editor of Fast Company Inc. magazines. Um, Rachel Beck, Columbia Business School, former business reporter, award winner at the Associated Press, and it just really goes on. We just have a different kind of staff here at uh, at MBA Mission, and uh, I think we have a different kind of experience. 
So with that, I'm going to um, I'll, I'll call some attention here to our blog. Um, we have seven or eight different series going on on a weekly basis. Our blog is a tremendous free resource. We have a free personal statement guide on our on our uh, website, and we offer a free consultation. Um, you know, this time of year we're absolutely packed, so um, it is free. So I hope you'll appreciate the fact that uh, that you know it might take a, a day or two to, to schedule you. Um, you know, please be patient, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, that's my piece on uh, on Chicago Booth. I want to uh, to thank. Beat the GMAT again for uh, for having us, and uh, I'm going to open up some questions here. I think I'm all talked out, so I'm going to open up some questions here for um, Jessica Schlar, one of our members of our staff, a, a veteran consultant. If you uh, do some searching around for her, you'll find out that she's probably one of the best regarded consultants uh, out there. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn over to her to type some answers um, again because I'm a little tuckered out. But thanks for joining us, and uh, and good luck with your Chicago Booth application essays. Jeremy, thanks so much for that awesome presentation. For those of you who might have joined us a little bit late, we've been listening to Jeremy Scheinwald, who is the founder of MBA Mission, walk through his analysis of this year's 2012-2013 Booth School of Business MBA application essay questions. So at this point, uh, we're ready to go into our Q&A. Uh, if you have a question about Booth, we have some folks from MBA Mission who are standing by to answer your questions live. So the way that you pose a question to us is to uh, enter your question as a new comment right here on the Booth School of Business MB Watch comment wall. This is gonna be a moderated chat, so we're gonna see the questions coming in and then uh, polish your questions one by one and have uh, the MBA mission experts answer as many as possible for the remaining hour. There's not gonna be any audio or video for this portion of the session. This Q&A is gonna be purely uh, text chatting through the Booth MBA Watch comment wall page. So um, all that being said, a huge thank you to our good friends at MBA Mission and especially Jeremy Scheinwald for walking us through this great presentation today. And at this point, we're ready to take your questions. So thanks very much.